changer of our mind there is nothing too hard for you and so we pray at this time that your word would reign supreme and true Lord saturate us with your word and your presence even as we celebrate motherhood and mothers today we thank you Lord Jesus Christ for what you have left as an example in your word of motherhood we thank you Lord for this privilege that we have to gather and worship we thank you for every soul that has had a mind to be here today. And we pray that you speak to every heart and every mind in Jesus' name. 
if there is someone looking for something specifically from you, if there has been a question in their head, a situation in their life, speak to them today in the name Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that you get to someone's attention. We pray that you move in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even if someone has yet to repent of their sins, Lord, someone is holding on to something. Someone is stuck in something. Lord, you are a mighty deliverer. And in your right hand is all power. We pray that you exercise that power today as we subject our will unto you. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Let everyone say amen. 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 You may be seated in the name of Jesus. We give honor to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We give honor. Amen. To First Lady Graham, we give honor to Mother Miller. We give honor to Mother Yusinth. And we give honor to all of the natural mothers in the house. In Jesus' name, we say happy Mother's Day to you. In the name of the Lord, we pray that God is blessing you thus far on this day. And it's good to have you in the house of the Lord. If you are here for the first or second time as our guest, we are so grateful that you chose to be with us today. You could be anywhere else doing anything else, but you chose to come to 642 Gorham Street. And we honor the presence of the Lord for you being here today. We say that we would have had church without you, but it just would not have been the same if you didn't come. And so we pray that you come again in Jesus' name. We give honor to all of the saints and everyone here. Now, I know it's gray outside. And I know it's been a little chilly outside. And I know sometimes those are the days where we want to yawn and go to sleep. But we're here to celebrate Jesus Christ. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Someone said Friday. I didn't come really looking for nothing, but I left with something. Amen. Amen. So I don't mind Jesus interrupting if we allow him to. In Jesus' name, give honor to my mother. In Jesus' name, we may be watching us um, via technology. We thank God for her. Amen. Thank God for my grandmother and all of my aunts watching in North Carolina. We give God praise and honor for you. Amen. Those tuning in from India, we thank God for you. We're getting letters and emails from all over. Those in Puerto Rico, we thank God and honor the presence of the Lord for you being with us virtually in the name of Jesus. Even in Jamaica, we thank God for you and the calls or the emails and the letters that you send of encouragement. We will continue to pray with you as you pray with us in Jesus' name. Judges chapter number 4. We want to learn about a woman today. Uh, some pronounce her name as Deborah. Some say Deborah. Amen. But she is in the fourth chapter of the book of Judges. That is in the Old Testament. Amen. After Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and then Judges. We'll look a little bit at Judges chapter 4, and then we'll read one or two verses in Judges chapter 5 as we learn about this mother in Jesus' name. Is that okay? Now, I'm not, you know, the type of guy that feels that you can only learn from men. In fact, some of the best books that I've read were female authors. Amen. Some of the best teachers that I've had. What did you say? Frankenstein was written by a um, woman. Amen. And that got a lot of awards. Amen. 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 So you're a reader. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we're going to read a little bit something about Deborah in Jesus' name. So chapter number uh, four. Let's start reading at verse number one to provide context for this great woman. It reads, And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Harasheth of the Gentiles. All that means is Israel was real bad and now they were being uh, enslaved by King Jabin. 
the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron. That means the king of Jabin had 900 chariots of iron. And for you history buffs, they say the Iron Age, I think, started around 1000 B.C. This was written somewhere around 13, maybe 26 B.C. So that refutes history that says iron was found in 1000 B.C. because it was, that, it was found 300 years before that. And even if you read Genesis, it talks about iron, so that's even hundreds of years before that. So there has been iron because God created it and it was on the earth when he made the earth. Is that okay? Amen. And 20 years uh, he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, let the church say Lapidoth. She judged Israel at the time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel and Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. In other words, she settled people's disputes as a civic officer. And she sent and called Barak, son of Abinoam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of Israel, of Naphtali, and the children of Zebulun? And I, in other words, the Lord will draw unto thee to the river of Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, and his chariots, and his multitude, and God said, I will deliver them into thine hand. In other words, you don't have to be a slave anymore. You're going to have the victory. And Barak said unto her, Barak was the captain of this army. He said, listen, if thou will go with me, then I'll go. But if thou won't go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Notwithstanding the journey that thou takest, shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. In other words, because you didn't just believe God's word through me as a woman of God, you're not going to get credit for this victory. I'm going to give the victory to another woman. And that woman's name was Jael, by the way. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And when Barak called Zebulon and Naphtali to Kadesh, he went up with 10,000 men at his feet, and Deborah went with him. Now Heber, the king, the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, had severed or cut himself off from the Kenites, and he pitched his tent in the plain of Zanam, which is by Kadesh. And they showed Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinoam, was gone to the Mount Tabor. This was all part of God's plan of drawing Sisera out. Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the people were with him, and Harasheth of the Gentiles unto the river of Kishon. And here's where we want to focus. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up. In other words, get ready. For this is the day which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. Deborah didn't go to war. She just went with them to the battle front, but she didn't fight. And then verse, uh, go to chapter number 5, verse number 7. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose and I was a mother in Israel. And if you look at the last verse and the last chapter of 31 and chapter number 5, rather, it says the land had rested for 40 years. In other words, because of Deborah, there was peace in Israel for 40 years. One of the biggest blessings on earth is the privilege of being 
a parent, a mother. I'm reminded of a child that was looking at his mother one day and said, Mommy, why do you have so many gray hairs? And the mother said, well, these gray hairs represent the number of times you got on my nerves. The number of times you made me worry. The number of times you did not listen to me. True child looked into the grandmother and says, well, then that means you were really bad because grandma has way more gray hair than you have. Sometimes, as you said, it may not feel like it's good to be a mother. But rest assured, motherhood is a blessing from the Lord. Why? Because Psalm 127 says that children are a gift from the Lord and they are a reward from Him. And so after the runny noses and the diapers and the terrible tools and the tweens and the teens and all of those types of things, there's a place in motherhood that's joyous, that's grateful, that's appreciative. So stating the obvious, it is from biological mothers that all human life flows. And although mothers and motherhood is a big blessing, that's not the biggest blessing. A greater blessing within that blessing is the ability to be a godly mother. The greatest gift that a mother, a parent, can give a child is an example of godliness. And maybe you say today, well, I've made some horrible mistakes as a parent. The Lord is telling you specifically, it's not too late. You have the power to produce peace. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, mothers have the power to produce peace. Well, you say, I don't want to produce peace. Well, you can produce what you want, good or bad, because mothers have the power. It just so happened that Deborah had the power in a short amount of time to produce peace in a whole nation that was ruled primarily by men. And we'll examine what she had and what she did that gave her this type of power. So it's not too late, mother. You can start today of being that type of godly mother that God has called you to be. Because you have access to what God has in heavenly places. And today we thank God for all of the mothers, especially godly mothers that we can learn from. The woman we learn from today in the text is Deborah. She's married to Lapidoth and full scriptural exposure, the Bible doesn't tell us if she had biological children or not. But we read uh, chapter 5 verse 7 where it says that she arose as a mother in Israel. Yes. And I use that word arose as a pun because she was a rose that grew in Israel for a specific time yes. and for a specific purpose to be the mother of a whole nation to lead them out of sin and into the will of the Almighty God. Amen. Motherhood puts women in a position of power in someone's life, if for no one else but the child. And mothers in general possess power. And such is the case for Deborah, because she had the power to produce peace. Now, fellas, don't go to sleep on me because as we explore her life, there's something in there for you and I because we can use what she did to produce the same results in our lives and the lives of other people. Amen. Now, look at the context for a moment. This was the nation of Israel, God's chosen nation that had made some mistakes and they found themselves in trouble spiritually and naturally. Verse 3 says that they were in trouble for 20 years with God. But then a rose grew from the concrete by the name of Deborah. And you see, she met under a tree and had something that people just came and asked her opinion. And she was able to help settle some disputes among the nation. 
And so what was it that gave this woman the power to produce peace? Well, I'm going to give you three things, mother. I'm going to give you three things, brother, that we learned from Deborah on Mother's Day that if we apply in our lives, we can produce the desired results in our home. You see, one of the challenges today is that humanity feels that we can live one way in one environment and another way in another environment and produce the results that we want. Show me any child with a bad attitude over a long period of time that's a part of their spirit and I'll show you a home that has a bad attitude. Show me a child who's willing to give sacrificially and love and I'll show you a home that we was raised in where they give sacrificially in love. Amen. But how many know that regardless of the environment I used to have yesterday, God can make today's environment better? Amen. Because that's the kind of God we serve. Amen. We've been talking a lot about the things that we say. The enemy doesn't want you to believe that things can get better. That's why they say in this nation right now, suicide is at an all-time high in the last decades because people are losing hope and feel that every morning I wake up, things are going to be the same. But Jesus said, I can make all things new. Jesus says, I don't change, but everything in my environment, I am God. I can change anything, any problem at any time. But you have to be willing to change before I can change anything else. Amen. And so this woman, if you look at verse number four, it says... Uh, the first thing that she was connected. Women with power are connected. Amen. I'm not talking about being in the mob or the mafia. I'm talking about being connected with not resources, but the source. You see, verse 4 says that Deborah, uh -huh, she was a prophetess. The Bible only gives that uh, description to four other women in the Bible. And maybe that'll be the next four Mother's Day, so we'll stay with Deborah right now. But you see the word prophetess, you got to understand the scriptures translated, is not a preacher. Prophetess, in essence, meant a poet. Prophetess, in this, meant an inspired woman who received divine revelation of God and who was able to interpret the will of God. Yes. See, I'll give you a foreclosure uh, a preview. Miriam was also called a prophetess. Right. And the first time she was called a prophetess, she had a tambourine in her hand singing a song, making up poetry about what had happened based on what God had already done. Yes. Yes. But it doesn't stop there just with praise and worship. These women of God are able to have divine knowledge of God and his will and their female foretellers. See, she was connected enough to be able to know that I have to call Barak because God wants to give Barak the victory. Mm -hmm. Brother, we can never be too high and too tough and too masculine to not listen to a real mama of God. Yeah. Because they can hear some things that we may not be able to hear yet based upon their connectivity. You see, she had a personal connection with God. And that's what made her a prophetess because the things that she was writing her poems about were based on things that God was doing in her heart. I hear the songwriter says that there's something on the inside that I just can't keep to myself. And because he wasn't poetic, he said it's just a holler stirring up from the depths of my soul. You see, you have to understand the difference between a connection and a relationship. You see, a lot of people have a relationship with God, but once you come in and you're born again, now it's time to establish a connection to God. You see, I know God. The devils, how about that, have a relationship with God. They believe. They are believers too. The Bible says they even shake a little bit. So they have a relationship with God because he created them. But they don't have the right connection to God. Well, what do you mean? I'll illustrate it for you. If you have a cell phone, you have a cell phone. Anyone have a cell phone? I think we have a cell phone. Well, number one, your cell phone has power. If it's powered, it, praise God, it turns on. But in order for you to get the full benefit of the cell phone, it has to be connected to some type of plan. 
and that plan is connected to some type of satellite in the sky or some type of antenna on top of a building. And to get full access to the capabilities of the phone, there has to be a connection and not just power. See, when you get the Holy Ghost, there's power there. But to understand how to use the Holy Ghost, to understand how to use the phone's GPS and all the apps and the, the different books and the different alarm clocks and the stopwatch and how to sync it with all your emails and your calendar and your schedule has to be a connection somewhere so that it can make everything run smooth in your life. See, that's what Deborah had. She had a connection, not with a satellite in the sky, but with Jesus Christ in the sky above the satellite. And the only way to get a connection is through prayer. That's what made her so powerful and connected because she was a prayer warrior. When you look at verse number four and verse number five, it tells us that she judged Israel at the time. And she would hang out under a palm tree so much that they named that place after her. And she would just settle disputes. Mm -hmm. And so not only was she connected, but because she was connected, she had something called wisdom. You see, we're in the information age. There's, there's not a lack of knowledge and information. I mean, it's everywhere all the time. But what's lacking today is wisdom. How do I apply this knowledge and information appropriately to get the desired results? You see, if I flood the market with knowledge and information, people won't know who to believe. You see, that's why there's so many religions and so many churches and so many beliefs because the enemy is flooding the market to cause people to not know which one to pick. I tell you, I go to the grocery store back in the day. I mean, come on now. They had two cereals back in the day. Corn flakes and Cheerios. Praise the name of our God. You had to pick which one you wanted. But now I go there to the cereal aisle. First of all, it's a full aisle here. And then all the colors and all the brands and all the names. I don't know what to pick. Send me to the store to get one thing. And I get sensory overload. And you know, I'm a, I'm a researcher. So then I got to pull out my phone and do, what do they say about Cheerios? What's the difference between Cheerios and, and Honey No Goals? And I got to analyze every single thing before I can make a good decision. When back in the day, I just picked one or the other and was happy. Right? So this woman had wisdom. And the way that she had wisdom, she was connected to God in prayer, but she was able to discern the truth. And how do I know she was able to discern the truth? Because she had people still coming to her, similar to Solomon. And the only way that can happen is she knew the word of God. And so godly mothers are connected through prayer, and they have wisdom through the Word of God. Amen. And you may not know everything. Listen, some of us didn't even grow up in the church, but that woman in your life was speaking words that were in the Bible, and we didn't even know it, and we stand here today because of the Word of God. The last thing, if you look at verse number 8 and 9, and this is where we'll spend a couple minutes, this woman had influence. Yes. My pastor told us years ago, he said one of the chief things women has is influence. Right. You can influence for good, you can influence for bad, but all women have influence. How do I know that? Because God himself said it's not good for who to be alone? Amen. For man to be alone. So then he made a woman. That woman had the influence on the man in ways that no one else could have. And it doesn't just have to come down to a marriage thing. These people weren't married. But look at verse, praise God, look at verse number eight. It says, Barak said unto her, I'm gonna go only if you go. And if you don't go, I'm not gonna go. And in verse nine, it says here, he says, okay, well, I'm gonna go with you. Now, some of us may look at Barak like he was soft. But listen, if God is calling us to do stuff that we haven't done before, it can be a little scary. Yeah. It can be a little apprehensive. It can be a little uncertain. But God always puts someone in your life to say, you can do it. Just keep on moving. Go ahead. 
Barak was no different than Gideon. We talk about Gideon, but Gideon felt he couldn't do what God called him to do because he was poor. Right. We talk about Abraham. Abraham messed up when he had Ishmael because he thought that he was too old, praise God, to have a child. Yeah. Moses said, I can't do what God wants me to do because I have a speech impediment. Jeremiah said, I can't do what God wants me to do because I'm young. And here this fellow was saying, I can't do what God wants me to do because I'm a little nervous about doing it. But this woman stepped up and even and stepped up and said, listen, I'm going to increase your faith because I'm connected with God. Yeah. Even Peter on the day of Pentecost, well, praise God, he preached that great message. But just a little while before that, he denied God three times. Yeah. The same Peter that walked on water, yeah. he got a little nervous after he did it and then fell through the water. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Everyone at some point gets weak in faith in God, but that's still no excuse not to do what God says do. Right. And so here comes this great woman this great mother to support him, to give him encouragement, to make him feel like he can do it. Listen, ladies, every woman in here, you can use your influence to build people up or the influence can be used to suck things out of people. But godly women have the power to change their environment regardless of what the environment is. If you are connected to God through prayer, if you're exercising wisdom through his word and using that influence influence positively. It's only a matter of time. You mean to tell me this woman that did not even go into battle, all she did was repeat what God told her and it came to pass and there was peace in Israel despite what the government was doing. If that could happen in a whole nation, you have the power in your mouth to do it right within your home, right on your job, in your finances, in your spirit in your soul when I look on the TV I'm tr I was trying to talk today but I feel the Holy Ghost when I look on the TV they're tearing down the definition of motherhood they got you worried praise God about how sexy you can be as opposed to how sanctified you can be they got you trying to figure out who Becky is rather than who Jesus is come on got you trying to drop it like it's hot instead of getting out on your knees and praying like you don't want to go to a place that's hot. Listen, God called you because you're beautiful, lady. You don't have to take nothing off or pull anything up to be beautiful in the sight of the Almighty God. Am I preaching to somebody here? Woman, I'm here to tell you, listen, if there's no confusion between who's the mother and who's the daughter, then some things have got to change in the name of our God. You can do what God calls you to do. I'm not saying be a doormat. The old school folks would say, listen, all women are good for is being barefoot and pregnant. The devil is a liar. She held pride. She held position in government and still found the power and the ability to serve God. Now, I'm not here to tell you what the Bible, I'm here to tell you exactly what the Bible says. You can be successful and still do it God's way. You can be exalted and still do it God's way. I don't have to get my definition from Beyonce. I, I don't have to get my definition huh, from who's the girl huh, that sings them song of Rihanna. Huh? I don't have to get my definition huh, from Alice Walker huh, and people from the feminist movement huh, that tell me, listen, huh, be anti-man. Huh? If I'm anti-man, I'm anti-God huh? because God created both man and woman. Huh? I gotta be before Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you, huh, you can be saved. You can be holy and still be attractive in the name of God. From the outside in and from the inside out. The world will tell you young girls that listen, if you don't have a certain amount of followers and a certain amount of boyfriends then you're not worth anything. The devil is a liar. I don't care how many people like or don't like your Facebook post. God did create you to see how many likes you could get. He created you so that you would know he loves you. So if they don't like your post, if they pull you or not, you know your identity is in Jesus Christ. Praise the name of our God. Don't let no boy, little girls, don't you let no one put their hands on you when you go in the bathroom. If it's a person of authority, forgive me parents, I'm going to tell 
you like I tell my kids. Uh, you scream Jesus. Uh, you fight. You scratch. You kick. Don't let anybody touch you. Uh, in the church. In the home. On your job. In the school. I don't care if it's the principal. The vice principal. You fight them. And you get them off you in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the enemy's trying to attack our mothers. Uh, trying to attack future motherhood. Uh, but I'm here to say uh, that God always has a remnant. Uh, Deborah was a remnant uh, that nobody else wanted to stand. Uh, but this mama said, I'm going to stand. Uh, I'm going to stand. Uh, I know this job is supposed to be for men. Uh, but if they don't stand, uh, I'm going to do it anyhow. Uh, because I'm connected to the source. Let the church say amen. Amen. I was trying to read today, but see what happens when folks pray, praise God, you can feel the power, you may just be in here feeling nothing, but if you get connected to God, you can feel some power, you can feel something in this place, because God wants you to know, mother, that you are right where he wants you to be, and somebody's saying, well, no, I got all these problems, well, the devil has you right where God wants you to be, either way, God knows where you you are and he wants to bless you and so this woman used her connection she used her influence and her wisdom and when you use your connection influence and wisdom it always produces power you see so focus ladies on what God would have you to be and do the world says you don't need a personal connection with God the world says listen you just gotta be connected to the right man I've never seen, I'm sorry, I'm trying, I've never seen so many untalented people on TV. You mean to tell me all I gotta do is put out a derogatory tape of myself and I get my own TV show and become a millionaire? The devil is a liar. All I have to do is get caught up in some scandal and then I can be on the preachers of law? The devil is a liar. Listen, let God be true. And every man, woman, boy, and girl be a liar. I just want to live holy. I just want to do what the Bible says. Forget the stuff I don't understand. There's enough I do understand that I struggle with. I just want to do what's right in the sight of the Almighty God. And be connected to have power. I'm tired of my home suffering. I'm tired of my kids drowning. I'm tired of being manipulated and controlled. I'm tired a power. Mother, you can have power today when you drop on your knees and say it's going to stop. When you drop on your knees and say I'm going to obey God. When you come to church and let this word get in you, it produces power in the name of the Lord. You look at our nation today. A lot can be said about leadership, but it begins in the home. It's not the teacher's fault. It's not fault. What's happening in the home, praise God, is supposed to be predicated upon the word of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I see you saying, well, my mother and daddy don't do right. Well, you hold on, young person. God calls the young because they're strong. Samuel served God at the age of two years old. He came in the church and ministered. You're not too young. God can use you the same way he used this woman to do things that will defy your mind. Don't let someone talk to you and say you're not good enough and you're not smart enough and you're not strong enough and you're not wise enough and you're not pretty enough. The devil is a liar. Don't you know God made you? All these sicknesses, ADHD and all that kind of DD. Listen, that's foolish talk. You may process differently, but you don't have a learning disability. God didn't make that mistake. We have an economic system, an educational system that says if you don't get the answer in this time, then something may be wrong with you. I thank God he didn't do me like that because if I didn't get saved in this time, I'd be burning in hell right now. But he allowed me to go on my personal exploration plan and put landmarks by the way to lead me to a rock that is higher than him. And someone's in the house today and God is trying to tell you you have a relationship with God but now it's time to get connected to God. When you pull your cell phone on you got some power. Give me a phone. It works 
a little bit. The lights lighten up. You can play some games. But when you need somebody and don't have no service, when you need to call someone, you can't get through. Listen, the enemy will have you thinking that just because you can do some things with God, that you're where you need to be. But you better have connection to God so that you can dial J-E S-U-S and get him on the horn. Someone said Jesus on the main line. I hate when I call companies and I need some help and it's a recording or someone in another country with an intact and I can't understand. Jesus don't have recorders. He doesn't have our answering machines. When you call Jesus, he'll answer every time. He won't let the phone ring. He won't do a call right here. He'll pick it up because he'll know who's on the line. He won't say whose number is this and where are they calling me from. They'll say, I know who it is because that's my child. That's my daughter. That's my mom. Of Jesus. Let the church say amen. And so I'm just going to be connected with God. The world says, don't worry about wisdom. You can figure everything out by going on the internet. Don't worry about influence because ain't nobody thinking about you. Listen, somebody's always watching you from the smallest to the greatest. Someone's always watching. Everyone's an example. I don't care Charles Barkley and Alan Iverson and all them fellas back in the day that said, I ain't a role model for nobody. Everybody's a role model for somebody in the name of Jesus. The two-year-old's looking up to the teenager. The teenager's looking up to the young adult. The young adult's looking up to the middle-aged adult. And it goes on and on and on. And then you got some old folks trying to look, 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 look to the teenagers. Come on, where you get them tight jeans from? Where you get them shoes from? Listen, you ain't a great no more. You are raisin. You can't wear that. Come on, it's okay. The Bible says the aged women, in other words, some women with some gray hair, some women and some things may be drooping past the point that you want them to be. Teach the young women how to be keepers of the home. Teach them how to love. Teach them how to give. Teach them how to be kind. Ain't nothing like a mean, nasty person. I was in the dollar store. That's right, I shop at the dollar store. Somebody to say something because y'all folks that were here on Friday, your note cards came from the dollar store. That take dollar store. I'm not balling like that yet in the name of the Lord. But I was there. And how you gonna this mother? She was in line, praise God. And you know how you in the line get kind of long in the dollar store. And she came, she didn't even get line. This is ridiculous. What is wrong with that? Why there no number in line? Why they open up something else? And you know big thing, but it was a little teenager. She was on the cash register and the woman started yelling and berating the teenager. What's the matter with you? You don't understand. Let's call somebody. And you started being mean and nasty to the person. I could hear it all the way to the back of the store. And so you know I've been talking power, right? So I'm like, I want to defend my sister. And I'm going to walk up there, but she had already opened up another line. She was gone. And so now I'm about four people behind her. And the young woman, that was amazing. Listen, so you don't have to be disrespectful. She didn't open her mouth. She just did her job. And I said, hmm, what kind of power is this? I got her line. I want to talk to her for a second. And so I'm in about four behind her. And I couldn't believe it. The cashier's there. The woman walks up to her and said, you should have called someone. And just like poked her. Lord. I said, what? I got to have the Holy Ghost because I want to run out there and do something about this. And I got up to the young sister. I said, listen, what's your name? Told me her name. I just pray. I said, God, go bless you. I said, it's unbelievable discipline that you can do that. I said, you got to speak word. I said, you're going to own something one day. And that woman's great, great, great is going to work for you. That's how you're going to get her back. Because God can use some things. Come on here. God can use some things in your life. You better be careful. I didn't curse nobody. But I said, you're going to own something. And she's going to be buying from you. And then you have the ability to say, excuse me, miss. But we're not serving you today because back when I was a teenager you poked me in my head and now God done made my enemies to be my footstool. I was the tail but now I'm the head because I'm connected 
that happen to the Almighty God. All right, let me leave this alone here. And so, praise God, we thank all the mothers for being in the house today. And I just want you to know, Mother, that you're loved. I want you to know that you are appreciated. I want you to know that sometimes it can be a challenge, but you're meeting the challenge. And to all the future mothers, listen, children are a gift from God. And the decisions you're making today will affect your unborn children tomorrow. And now now with the internet, huh? something can be done and be on the internet and live for years. Huh? And we don't want our kids looking up stuff huh? and say, oh, mommy, you're singing behind the devotion pole, but he used to swing from a pole. Huh? We don't want to see all that. Huh? We want to see goodness. Huh? We want to see mercy. Huh? We want to see temperance. Huh? And so just remember huh? that this Deborah rose huh? and she was a rose. Huh? You see, I'm reminded of a fella. Huh? Anyone get flowers or mother? Day, huh? where there was a fellow who went to the florist on Mother's Day, yeah? and when he walked in there, he said to the cashier, he said, listen, I, what can I get for $3? And the cashier looked at him kind of crazy like and said, well, uh, you can get 12 carnations or, or you can get one rose. And, and the fellow scratched his head. He said, what in the world? Uh, for $3, why can I get 12 of one thing and only one of another thing? He said, well, uh, he says, you have to understand something about carnations. You see, uh, they don't live quite as long, but more importantly, they don't smell as good for a long period of time. He said, but roses smell good for a longer period of time. So what you're paying for is the influence of the smell of the flower over a longer period of time. And the fellow scratched his head and said, hmm. And he ended up buying the rose because he said, listen, if I have the rose, it can remind my mother about how much I love her even beyond its existence. How you know that, preacher? Because do you know what potpourri is? Potpourri is simply crushed up roses that were dead that still give off fragrance. Hallelujah. That's for my grandmama who was a florist. And so even despite mother, the fact that the world may have crushed you, despite that we had to bury some mothers recently, listen, the mother's fragrance still comes through in the life of her children. You may feel underappreciated. You may feel like you're not doing a good job. But listen, let God continue to work in your life because your influence is going beyond just what you see. You're leaving a lasting legacy that smells good. God is not looking for mothers to be carnations, to live for a little while and then to stink when they die. But God is looking for mothers to be roses, to let a sweet fragrance go through. But if you touch them the wrong way, they'll stick you. That's okay. Because we need mothers like that too. If you see my kids doing something, I'm going to try to leave it alone. But I grew up in the church. Well, if you didn't testify when it was you service, you got a pitch on your back. You got a slap on your head. Get up and testify. Am I lying? I grew up in a church where the mother would say, listen, I don't care that you are 18 with a scholarship. You're going to sing in this choir. And I'm up there with a muscle head. You're going to sing in that choir. Praise the name of our God. We can do that because that's what we need. I don't mean to steal from Clinton or whoever said it, but it is a village that raises a child. Because when I go here and go there, and I hear the same message, I can't get away from it. Because the message is rooted in godliness. And so, Mama, be encouraged. You're a rose. Be encouraged. You smell good. Be encouraged. You are influential. Continue to use your wisdom. You know what they tell me, right? They say when kids are little, the parents know everything and then when they get teenagers they know nothing and then when they get a little bit older they go back and realize that their parents actually did know something you may be caught in that cycle I'm in the cycle where one thinks I know everything and the other one thinks I know nothing she's a little premature she's a little too smart for her own good but I thank God for it but no matter where you are in that cycle God still is with you 
And as long as you live godly, as long as you use that wisdom and influence, everything is going to be all right. Let me give a word to someone that felt that, listen, I fall out of the church and I made some mistakes and it makes me a bad mother. What matters is what you do today. Philippians 3 tells me, forget those things that are behind and reach forth to those things that are in front of you. Press toward the mark. Set your goals. You can be a good mother. You can be a good wife. You can't do nothing about what you did, but you can do something about what you're going to do. Don't let guilt and shame ride you. Don't let your bad choices ride you. God has forgiven you. If you've asked him for forgiveness, he's not holding that mistake against you. And I feel in my spirit, some of you have had abortions and Mother's Day is a sad day because you know the mistake you made. Listen, if you give it to Jesus, you don't have to cry anymore. He'll forgive you and heal and your womb will not be shut as a result of that mistake. In the name of Jesus, when you repent and when you repent it, he said he would forgive all of our iniquities. He said it. He said it. He said it. So throw the picture away. Throw the report away. Throw the memory away. If it's calling you to get depressed, Jesus wants you to go higher. He wants you to go farther. And don't you let no mistake drag you down. Yeah, you messed up, but so did everyone else. And that's why God died. His blood will cover you. His blood will pardon you. I'm tired of people letting the devil ride them and letting their conscience ride them. We're supposed to be free because whom the Son has made free is free indeed. You're free, mama. You're free, lady. You're free. Now walk in it. Talk in it. Live it. Know it. Breathe it. You're free. Would you stand with me? Lord Jesus, we honor you. And we praise you for this day. We thank you for this Mother's Day. And we thank you for all these great women of God. The mothers, the future mothers. We thank you, Jesus Christ, for our young people. We thank you for our friends, our guests, our visitors. We thank you, Jesus Christ, for this day. And we pray, Lord, that you would impart unto us wisdom. You said in your word that if any lacks wisdom, to simply ask you for it. And so if you need wisdom right now, simply ask God. Say, God, give me wisdom. We pray, Lord, that we apply what's in your word to our lives. Lord, we pray, Lord, for the proper influence in our society. We will not succumb to the doctrines of this world that are contrary to your word. Raise in us the boldness and power to be the definition of what you have created us to be. And even some, Lord God, that don't have mothers, some that may not know their mother, some that may have lost their mother, some, oh God, that are strange and may not have the best relationship. Visit that person in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have all of the answers for every problem and question, but we know the source, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so touch that heart, that mind, that spirit in Jesus' name. Touch them with a mind and a word of encouragement and a desire to do thy will no matter what comes our way. And we will worship you and we will praise you. We receive this word in Jesus' name. If you receive the word, just lift your hands and say, Lord, I receive your word. Lift your hands and say, Lord, please give me more wisdom. Say, Lord, use my influence for your glory. In Jesus' name.
like to talk about anything that you heard today. If you would like to talk about salvation, if you would like to receive prayer for salvation, for baptism, for repentance, you see me after the service today. If you want to know more about anything according to the scriptures, and I will be available unto you in Jesus' name. Would you look at the neighbor next to you and just simply smile and say, neighbor, neighbor. I, love you. I love you. Look at the neighbor next to you on the other side and say, neighbor, neighbor. I, love you. I love you. We have to do it again because everybody didn't smile. Smile. <laughs> neighbor, I love you. Come on. I didn't, I didn't tell him. Don't take that for granted. Some people don't hear I love you. Some people don't hear it. Love is a choice. I can love a person and not know them based on a choice, not just a feeling. So save your heart. And now last, would you look up? Look up. Say, God, I love you. Amen. 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 At this time, let us prepare ourselves for our tithes and offering, which is another form of worship as we show gratitude unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Lord you are, as you make ready your offerings, if you would like a tithe of the Lord, I ask you to raise your hand so the usher can pass your tithe. We also thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to give it to your house, Father. We're asking, Lord Jesus, that you bless it, Lord Jesus. Multiply it, Lord God. Most of all, allow it to do something mighty in your kingdom, Lord Jesus. Bless, Lord God, those that have to give. Touch those who may not, Lord God, but have the desire to give, Lord Jesus. Increase us, Lord God, as we go forth in the week and through the day, Lord God. We love you. We honor you, Lord Jesus' name. Amen. And as you turn the face of center, God, smile. This is a form of praise in Jesus' name.
today. Amen. In celebration of motherhood. If you are with us for the first time at Full Deliverance Church, we want to let you know that your presence here today has made all the difference. Amen. Can we get a welcome to Full Deliverance on three? One, two, three. Welcome. Amen. And a hand raised for all of our guests. If you're here for the first time, can you raise your hand, please? We do have a small token of gratitude and appreciation. We thank you for accepting the invitation. Whether you walked in or whether you're here in support of someone as a mother, we're so grateful that you're here today. We pray you enjoy the service. Amen. And know that you're welcome to join us again at any time for any reason. In Jesus' name, amen. You are now considered family. <laughs> Amen. We want to remind you and invite you to please join us on Tuesday evenings at 7.30. We have a conference call prayer. There is the prayer line and the access code. Feel free to take a screenshot if you need to or write it down. We pray at 7.30 for our families, for our communities, for our friends. In Jesus' name, you're also welcome to give an audible prayer request at that time. Friday evenings, all are encouraged to join us beginning at 7 p.m. here at the church for prayer. Amen. This month will be a month of prayer every Friday evening beginning at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss prayer. We're not in here. Um, um, it's non-meditation like that. We are in here crying out to God for each other, for our communities, for our families, for our neighbors. Because the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In other words, if we come in here and we open our mouths so God can hear us, he has to respond. That is an awesome promise left in scripture. And we mean to take him up on his promise because he cannot lie in Jesus' name. Also reminding you that Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m., we do have children's Sunday school, we have adult Sunday school, and you are welcome to join us. And then at 10.30, we begin our morning service. And of course, you know that you are welcome to join us at 10.45 in Jesus' name for Sunday. Amen. We do have a couple of presentations we would like to make on today on behalf of our mothers and some other things. So first, we would like to call Sister Candace, I Candace Woods, forward. She was baptized here a couple of months ago. Can we give her a hand praise? Her? And I will let her explain why she is here today. not know me. My name is I Candace Woods and I was baptized here and I just wanted to thank you guys so much for just welcoming me with so much open arms and just being able to be a blessing um, to allow me to come in here and just welcome me. I felt like I was straight at home. Um, and although Full Deliverance is not my church home, but I see the amazing work that is being done here. And Pastor Graham and Lady Graham are just being able to be a blessing to so many people that are within the Lowell community. And I, you know, just can't thank you guys enough for just being so kind. Um, and I'm here today um, on behalf of my organization, the Women's Inspirational Group, um, to give a generous donation to you guys to the amazing work that you're doing here. And today we're going to be giving a $500 gift card um, to Full Deliverance to just thank us, you know, just to thank you for all of the amazing things that you're doing. Um, you know, in the, the level of work that I do, um, I, you know, I'm the founder of um, my own support group helping women in their professional and personal development at Dana-Farber. And my group originally started with 12 women, and now it has expanded to over 150 women. And I thank God for that amazing blessing. And one of the things I wanted to say is, you know, I ask God to be able to use me with the wonderful blessings that he has given me. I heard Molly share that she had a full scholarship. And Molly, I got the same thing. And, and I can't even imagine to go to an Ivy League school, and I would be like, I would never get into this school. But God always says that there's a way when we can't see one. So, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you for all of the wonderful things that you do. 
I'm just so happy to be here to be a blessing to, to this church, uh, for you guys to be a blessing to me and for everyone here to never forget, never give up on your dreams. If there's something that you want to do, continue to keep striving. Don't allow someone to say that you can't do something. Prove them wrong, and that's what you have to do. Your skills that you have, be able to use those skills to be a blessing to someone else. And like Lady Graham says each time we leave, when you leave this church, be a blessing to someone, even if it means for you to just give them a few words of encouragement. But you're helping to save a life because there's so many people walking around in mental who have committed mental suicides. So you have no idea. So just be a blessing to someone, even if you don't feel like picking up your phone, pick up your phone. Because you never know, you might be saving someone's life. So thank you again for everything.